Nigeria's Ministry of Finance plans to close gap between official and black market Nigeria or Naira exchange rates. We'll be discussing the country's exchange rate crisis this morning. Young people across Nigeria mark the first anniversary of NSA's protests with symposium talks and more protests. And also coming up is Off the Press, where we review today's newspapers. Good morning, and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. It's a very beautiful Tuesday morning. Of course, uh, happy Ida Omalud. Uh, of course, uh, public holidays across the country this morning, except for we journalists and uh, essential workers. Uh, thanks for joining us. I am Wasaugi Ogbawa. And I am Messi Boko. As usual, we'll start off with the top trending stories. And this morning, we're looking at two of them. One of it is the fact that uh, some Nigerians who invested in some investment uh, scheme have been scammed or defrauded, if you like to say, of 22 billion naira by a couple who actually run this firm. And that's quite worrisome because this is not the very first time such is happening in Nigeria. But the question is, uh, do we ever learn? Will we ever learn from all of these experiences? Well, um, I think we'll, I'll start with saying that there, these are still allegations. You know, I think what, what currently um, the situation is, is um, the couple who allegedly run or who, you know, have been the forefront of the firm of the investment scheme, um, Bamiche and Elizabeth uh, Ajetumobi, um, have not been found in the last couple of days. Uh, no one can reach them. It's said that they might be out of the country already, you know, and, and some of all of that. Um, so I'll still leave it as an allegation. Maybe, you know, they went to the village for some traditional, you know, rights. It, why do I feel like, like you're trying to be very sarcastic here? <laughs> Maybe, you know, they just decided to take a vacation, turn their phones off, you know, a lot be stressed. Yeah, that's, that, know, because that's Nigeria so is stressing them. You know, the price of gas is, you know, getting more expensive every day. Um, maybe they haven't had power in a couple of days and they just decided to, you know, go to a hotel. No, but but anyway, the <laughs> Um, okay, that, so, that's why you know I would still say it's an allegation until they're found, you know, and or they until they show up and no, they're found. No, but, but how do you how do you feel if you have you know some kind of investment depending on the amount well, uh, uh, yeah, being there? The and then you can't because according to the reports, the phone numbers are all switched yeah, off. I mean, you, they're not reachable. I get I that. Mean, I mean, you can't just be unreachable. You have to find a way. That's a business. Yeah. Okay, so the offices, according to the stories, is locked. You know, you can't find them anywhere because you're situated somewhere around. So obviously, that. there's a bigger problem than I was describing and I was just making light of the situation um, but yes it is a crisis I, I'm just trying to still leave it as an allegation until they're found guilty of some of all these things okay. um, and like you said it's not the first time you know that we're seeing an investment scam or an investment scheme you know go under um, not very long ago, we spoke about the um, Gloria Say and her husband, you know, which were also um, um, accused of pretty much a similar thing. You know, and there's been many of them back to back in country. Um, I, I, there's people who have said that, oh, you know, per, per, some persons, some even banks, some major institutions um, invested, you know, as much as 500 million naira and some of all of that. The claim is currently that they um, uh, made away with, with about 22 billion naira, which, of course, you know, no one can actually verify. Um, I also saw that the, you know, one of the uh, media organizations reached out to their lawyers and that you know, the lawyer said, well, he has no access to them, he has not been able to reach them either, and they can't necessarily comment on the investors' uh, money that might be missing. Um, so it's, it's, yes, it's heart-wrenching for a lot of people, and, and sadly, it also got to uh, you know, affect uh, some investment platforms, some saving platforms that I wouldn't mention. Um, I also saw that there's people who mentioned them and started to withdraw their money and started to you know, create this controversy um, or whether the uh, savings platform will also crash. Um, I saw a couple of you know, those things happen. But I personally wouldn't blame Nigerians for wanting to always you know, put their money in these investments. The challenge that I have is that you, they, 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 they always, you know, sadly, fall for these scams. And it might have started off as something that maybe had a plan you know, to you know, run the long term, um, but mismanagement... Um, putting the money or, or you know, putting um, people's funds in, in, you know, in terrible investments and eventually some of all those things crash and then eventually you, you lose the whole of it. Um, but, but I would actually say that uh, no matter the investment scheme that we have out there, it's important that we understand financial education. And uh, as usual, because uh, some persons are saying, let's blame the CAC for all of this. I mean, let's, uh, those who have been affected should sue 
the CAC for that because I'm sure that that's a registered company and all of that. But the truth is, I think that before you, you know, throwing your monies into any investment or whatever business you're going to start, you should do your due diligence. And it requires, you know, a lot of investigation, doing a background checks and all of that to ensure that, okay, this is really genuine. But most of it, I think it, it falls down on the fact that there's this quick, uh, you know, um, get rich quick scheme. So everybody just wants to, because there are some things that are not realistic. I mean, you look at the profit margin, you look at how much you're getting. Mm -hmm. So you invest X, Y, Z. So you tell me if I invest a hundred thousand error and in the next uh, two months, I'm going to be getting 500,000 error. Well, uh, th that's so much. I understand how the, realistic the, is that? the discussion on financial intelligence, but of course you wouldn't expect that from everybody. Not everybody has financial intelligence or has the time to actually do all that research. You know, they would instead just rely on the fact that, you know, your company has stated certain things and has assured them that your funds are safe and you know you will get your returns there's also a little bit of greed like you mentioned you know and then the group of nigerians who say well i feel like this might be a scam or this might not last one year but if i get get in early and mm. i get paid get early, out. you know you know then i'm get safe it. you know and any <laughs> person who gets to invest later on well best of luck to you and that there's also that part of Niger you know uh mindset of nigerians you know that you might see in, in a situation like this um, I just feel, you know, like once again, you know, that there needs to be better ways that these things are, you know, protected against crashing. And of course, you know, government agencies need to also be more careful, you know, and know which of these things are very, very likely to be fraudulent and, you know, be able to protect people. Um, there, there should be certain things, you know, certain requirements, I believe, before you get you start an investment scheme. Um, that should be completely verified by the government before you are allowed to play with people's money. I'm also thinking that, yes, it's okay to say, yes, uh, we need government agencies and uh, bodies to be responsible to ensure that all of the schemes do not crash and uh, investigation should be carried out. But on the other part, I would solely say the responsibility should be 80% on the people. People should understand that there's a way money works. You can't just wake up and feel that, yeah, you're going to... Because if you look at... You, you, I mean, you can't just wake up and feel that, well, hey, money's going to come in, you know, in split seconds. So some of this... There are, th uh, there are obviously things that are too good to be true. You know, so I agree with you in the fact that you should do a little bit of research and some of things... Some, there are certain things that are red flags immediately you see them. This platform was, was um, offering 22% interest on loans received and 10% return returns. to investors, um, which, you know, some people would say, oh, this is, this, there's no bank that's going to give you this. There's no actual stable financial institution in the country that's going to give you any of these things. And so this might be actually too good to be true. But, you know, how much financial intelligence do you expect from 200 million people who have money to invest in, you know, these type of things? No, it's not very but, much. But sometimes, you know, I mean, looking at the fact that we're using honest, the word... I don't even have that level of financial No, no, it's not, it's not the matter of financial intelligence. Maybe that's just so much grammar right now. But it's called common sense. I mean, just look at it. So I put in 100,000 error. I mean, let's say somebody tells you, hey, if you give me 100,000 error now, you're going to have like uh, 300,000 error in the next two weeks. That's Doesn't that's so make much. sense. It doesn't make obviously. sense. How are you going to get 300? Obviously, why should you get 300,000? But, but that's why some of these fraudulent schemes do all they can to assure you that it is possible. They tell you they're investing in agriculture, and they're investing in oil, investing in forex, investing in so many other things. And then you can say, um, for, for people who don't, you know, want to, you know, actually dig deeper, like you've mentioned, they will say, oh, okay, you know, since you have these numerous places that you're investing, you know, then I, I trust that my money would be safe. It's, it's just a really, really sad situation. Mm -hmm. um, I would, because, so we need to move on. I would just say that I hope that these people will show up. I hope that they are found. Um, and, you know, some of these people who have invested millions and millions of their hard-earned money will be able to get their money back. I hope so. I, I don't know. I, I doubt they'll recover the funds, actually. I, I really, I, well, <laughs> good luck. Um, but once again, you know, it's another example and another reason, um, you know, for, for the maybe 10th time in the last few years that Nigerians need to be more careful with what they do with their money. Um, and have, you know, better checks with regards where they invest their millions of naira into. Even if it's 5,000 naira, I'm not putting it anywhere um, that I don't trust, hmm. to be honest. All right, so let's check out, uh, let's also talk about another one. It's uh, the hashtag NSAS protest. Tomorrow is going to be the 20th of October, and trust me, Nigerians are... Uh, across the board, are eager to continue the conversation. There's going to be a lot of activities. I actually saw all of that. And, uh, you know, it, it just shows I am surprised, first of all, because it's going to be like uh, some service, first of all, it already started. And so uh, let's hope for what's going to happen tomorrow. So you have services, you're going to be having conversations and all of that. And, and hopefully maybe there might just also be uh, some kind of gathering on the 20th at the Lekki Toll Gate. 
Well, I, I really don't know. Um, we're going to be having a conversation about that by 8.30 this morning with um, someone who's joining us uh, via Zoom to talk about what the um, uh, 20 days of activism, you know, has been like and what the goal really is um, to celebrate, of course, or to remember those who participated in the protest last year. It's going to be coming up at 8.30 this morning, so look out for it. I hope it's going to be a very interesting conversation. And, of course, you might get some clarity with regards to what um, would be happening tomorrow um, online and maybe offline. Um, some other thing that has been trending is a video. I hope that we can quickly share that with you. A video uh, man posted in Uyo of an, what well, was meant to be an amusement park that eventually has turned into an abandoned project. I remember yesterday we spoke about abandoned um, buildings and projects in Abuja. Mm. One thing that was in the, uh, part of our conversation yesterday. Yes. Um, if we can, I think that clip should be with you in a bit. Um, we, we, it, it's uh, very, very interesting, you know, seeing the amount of you know, money that was wasted in this particular facility that has eventually amounted to nothing. Uh, the Aquabum State Government has been called out on social media multiple times, you know, to respond to what exactly happened to this very, very seemingly expensive investment um, in tourism that has absolutely gotten nowhere. Uh, you can see from the pictures, you know, there's it's covered with grass. Most of the places that should have water are dirty, you know, and uh, of course the the uh, facilities in there don't seem to have been used even once. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much money, but this looks like a billion naira project, or even more than you know a billion naira project that um, is you know simply just wasting away. Um, and in my own response to this, you know, it's not shocking in any way because of one of the things that we spoke about yesterday, abandoned projects in Abuja and across the country. Um, and also because of our culture in Nigeria, two things I will mention, our culture in Nigeria um, of wasting money um, and abandoning projects. The Ajakuta Steel Complex is one of them that, of course, everyone in Nigeria should know that's a government project. It's not necessarily an amusement park, um, <laughs> but it's a government project that started decades ago that still has not been able to produce one drop of steel uh, till tomorrow. Um, there is that one. There's also the Tinapa project that really didn't get to achieve much in, in um, Cross, River um, Cross River State. There's also the Obudukato Ranch that a lot of people have also criticized that could be a lot more, but has absolutely achieved nothing. And so there's many, many of these things that um, set, you start off with billions of naira invested in them that you would expect would be very, very beautiful avenues for tourism and for leisure and some of all of that, but eventually get to be absolutely nothing. Um, yeah. There's that. And then second... Mm is our failure as a country to take advantage of what, we, of what should be tourism in Nigeria. Um, we have so much of this. If you, if you think about travel outside Nigeria, when people say, oh, they're going to Kenya, they're going to Morocco, they're going to South Africa, and the, the things that people get to actually live on the, and the lives that they get to live in those few days of being in those countries, um, it's not because it's impossible in Nigeria. It's because we've had zero interest in tourism in Nigeria. We've invested zero. Even though we mount it a lot. I mean, there's a lot of mounting about yeah. uh, huge interest in tourism and all of that. Yeah, that's all. But, so it brings me back to the conversation, or it brings me back to the path that it starts from, you know, policy formulation. From, for instance, uh, you ask yourself, government policies are supposed to solve problems. It's supposed to be uh, a reflection of, uh, the interest of the people. And so, so sometimes the policies that you have, because at the end of the day, if you eventually have like an amusement park, the, the question is, do the people need an amusement park? Is that what they need? Does it reflect the interest of the people? And so most times you find out that some of those projects at the end of the day fail because from the inception, from formulation, and then you get to the point where you ask yourself, all right, so yes, there's um, you know, this project right now, whether or not it reflects the interests of the people, and then there's a contractor. So you have several persons bidding for this contract. Uh, and, and in most cases, you find out that you have uh, friends, families, and uh, you know, what have you, of this political elite bidding for this contract, and the contract is given. Now, if you give a proposal, it's expected that there should be some, because in the policy circle, there should be some form of monitoring. And so yes, that's it, the, the, the project is ongoing, but who is monitoring to ensure that it is implemented up to, I mean, um, what you have actually stated in the proposal that's implementation, mm. right? So if you say you're oh. going to be using 50 chairs, uh, let's see, I'm sure you're going to state the kind of chairs you're going to be using uh, and all of that. So who is also ensuring that we're checking, we're ensuring that oh, well. this person, this policies or this project are implemented to the latter. That's also another, because that's where you begin to have all of this abandoned project. And these contractors, 
I mean, it's it's really, really, really sad if you ask me because this is so much money well, I, that's gone. I, I agree with that, you know, and it, it's um, I think what you're referring to is you know the quality control with uh, projects in Nigeria, and it's not just with you know um, uh, tourism, even with schools, with hospitals, with some of the things that government you know doles out billions of naira, and they tell you that they use five billion naira to repair so so a kilometer of road, you know, that in eight months it's already you know. Um, uh, ruined again. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no quality control like you mentioned. You know, when people say that they built a hospital, when they say they've built a school, you know, on behalf of the government, or when the government says they've given out a contract to build a school, you go there and you see that, you know, a lot of times it's very, very poor quality materials. I, I agree with that. Um, but whether, you know, one of the things that you mentioned is, you know, whether this is what really the, the people need at this time. I think there, there, there is space for investment in everything. Um, it's not necessarily a, oh, build schools first or build hospitals first. I think that, that there is enough space for us to have um, equal investments in every single, you know, um, regard. Mm -hmm. You can build hospitals and at the same time build an amusement park. You can build um, schools and at the same time build an amusement park. You can do all of that. It's the level of interest that we have in tourism that I've, ha you know, continue to have a challenge with. We we do not in any way, um, you know, take the conversation on tourism, you know, important enough. We do not invest in tourism. And for a country that has continued to mouth out um, off, uh, uh, you know, the fact that we need to diversify our, eco our economy and some of all of the tourism is one of the things that can very, very much be used to diversify. But how, how can tourism thrive when, uh, thrive when you know, insecurity is a big issue? So that, yeah. that's also, a, it's, it's oh. never going to work because anyone who gets, gets into, I mean, let's say you're going to go to a tourist destination, a tourist site, people should feel very safe and all of that. So Absolutely, it's key, but, but, then you look at the infrastructure. So it's almost impossible. It feels like we're just saying what we don't even mean. I mean, we're just saying it, but we don't mean it in reality. Well, we're, we're pretty much saying the same thing. But if, if you're interested in, in tourism, then you will fix insecurity. It's, it's that simple. It's the level of interest that doesn't exist. Um, and if we don't even have that level of interest to protect the Nigerian life, then I don't think the government will be sincere if it's talking about, you know, about tourism. Because first of all, Nigerian lives have been taken in their hundreds and in their thousands in the last couple of years. And the government has not in any way shown that it is bitter or it is angry or it is sad about the level of, of, um, of killings and murder that has happened and kidnappings that has happened um, in the last couple of years. So, of course, that can be the same government that says it wants to invest in tourism. Um, and, you know, we're not going to be honest with ourselves if we hear the minister tomorrow, Mr. Tourism, say, oh, you know, the government has spent so so and so billions of naira investment in tourism. That's, that's really just false um, and not being, you know, sincere, you know, to itself and to the Nigerian people. But anyway, um, hopefully, you know, the, the Akwaibom State Government gets to respond to some of all of that, uh, the questions that have been raised with regards to that project, and would we'll shed more light on it with time. Stay with us. We'll take a short break. When we come back, uh, Mr. Chris Wandu joins us with Off the Press to share his thoughts on some of the stories making headlines across Nigeria today.